How's it going, Ontario? Dave Cloninger with the Charleston Post and Courier here. Hope you're doing well, and thanks for doing this. Um, you know, I think uh, that you're probably like the last position coach added to the staff, but you're coming into really the, I guess, uh, the, the most proven and experienced room with uh, Kevin Harris in there. So just how's that transition be, uh, been, and, and how excited are you to get to work with these guys? Well, I mean, we already started to work now. So, you know, I was I got in here right at the beginning of February. They were kind of in the middle of their winter program. So I got to hop in on that and, you know, start to see those guys move and run around and watch them compete in the weight room. And as we got into our, what we call a towel ball, our little walkthroughs without a football, just starting to see how those guys learn and just starting to see how the group interact with each other and just kind of put my vision of how I want our guys to be, you know, just kind of keep on bringing them along. And now, you know, getting to practice, I think that was practice eight today or nine. Don't I, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but I'm getting to practice just seeing those guys work and seeing Kev come along and seeing Z White come along and then seeing Amos come along and seeing, you know, Nate Harris, Wayne come along. So just seeing those guys in there, really the biggest thing is just the energy on the sideline, man, the energy and enthusiasm starting to play with and the passion starting to come out throughout the team because I want us to know, like I always say with the tempo setters when practice starts, so we got to bring that juice and bring everybody else along. And, you know, I always say if you somebody coming in from outside, and you just come to look at practice, you should notice those running backs. Notice how we run us. Notice how we finish in our runs and those things. So it's been fun. How is Marshawn looking? And do you expect uh, anything from his rehab to linger into the summer or season? I mean, I don't. And, uh, you know, he, he's actually been he's actually been coming along well. Um, you know, he caught some ball, balls and stuff with me today. You know, they probably see it. I was, I was mic'd up today doing practice. So I'm sure they got some clips of Marshawn up there. That they, the camera kept following him. But uh, he, he's, he's been coming along good. And then, um, you know, him coming in and getting extra work with uh, Coach DeMarco and coming with me just to make sure he's on top of the offense. And also him, how he's been barred in and cheering for other guys. You know, that, that, that's been good to see because um, he, he's kind of moving into a more leadership role. He does things the right way. He's, in a, he's an accountable guy off, off the field. And I'm sure once I get him on the field, he's going to be the same way. So he's coming along, coming along. And, um, you know, I, I think as he keeps coming along, those reins are coming off a little bit more, a little bit more. And, you know, he's excited about it. And uh, man, him talk to dad about it. He, he's feeling good. So he got to continue plugging on at the rehab, and I think he's coming along fine. Mike Cuba. We do in Ontario. Uh, Mike Cuba with Watch Fox Sports. How you doing? Um, good, good. Uh, being able to have, I mean, obviously we, we know what, uh, what what we saw last year with Kevin Harris, and I know people are going to ask you about Marshawn, but as a coach and someone that played this position, obviously at a very high level in the NFL. What can it do for an offense when you do have multiple running backs that, you know, if obviously if Marshawn comes along and you mentioned Nathan Harris, Wayne, and some of these other guys can step up, what can that do for the dynamic of what this offense could look like this fall? Well, um, just just in recruiting and just and just how our backfield is already set up, you know, they've done a good job recruiting here before I was here. But um, you know, just kind of diversifying diversifying that portfolio, as they say. Or for me, I like clothes. Diversifying that wardrobe, you want things to be a little bit different. So it's good those guys all got different skill sets, you know. But also with how we're going to play our offense, how we're going to run it, we have to get uniform with certain things. Our steps have to be the same on inside outside zone. We got to know if we got a choice right out the backfield. We need an arc release that needs to all look the same. But then have a different skill set. Some Somebody, somebody a little bit better with jumping and bounce to the outside. We, we good with Kev. He getting that thing downhill. You know, Amos got a little bit of a mixture of both. You know, Marshawn brings something else to the table. So just keeping defenses off balance and then us being a multiple offense is going to work in our favor because we can personnel up and get guys in to do certain things that they're even better at. So I, I like it like that. Guys that have a different skill set on the field, but also all my guys have different personalities and molding those together, man, into a really good group. Dick Cox. Hi, Coach. Uh, Marshawn has already named him and Harris as thunder and lightning back there in the backfield, though. Uh, do you feel like that you have got one of the best backfields in the country? And, and how do you kind of see to it, you know, to keep, keep each of them fresh and, you know, give them a good one-two punch? Well, well, something that I always say, man, is you have to put it on tape first. So, you know, those are, those are aspirations, of course. And, you know, me being a running back coach in the SEC at the University of South Carolina, I want to have the best – running back group in the nation. I mean, that's our goal, that's our standard. But we got to work and put that on tape and show those things. So right now, we're kind of just setting the foundation, setting those things up for it. But as the season come along, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to give those guys chances to, chances to get the rock. You know, I haven't decided on you got the first two series, you got the first play. I mean, Marshawn isn't even out there yet, but we're going to be able to be multiple with our packages, putting more than one, one running back 
on the field at one time, uh, keeping those guys fresh, uh, making sure they play off each other. And I'm sure the guy that has the hot hand will continue to play throughout that game. But we have a few guys that's been playing well this spring, man. So it's, it's going to be competition in our room as well. That, I think that's the biggest thing. They're going to push each other. But then we got other guys in the we got other guys in the room that are also pushing along. So it's going to all be pushing each other. And you know, iron sharpens iron sharpens iron. So I feel like you know those guys keep pushing, and our standard and our goal is to be the best group in the nation. Then once we put it on tape, then you'll be able to see those things. But right now it's just all work. I'm sure it's all the groups in the SEC think they're the best group in the nation, and they're all putting in work. So we got to put that work in first. Colin Taylor. Ontario, Coach Beamer was pretty complimentary of Zaquandria White and the energy he kind of brings every day in practice. I'm curious, what have you seen from him, and what does maybe his skill set lend to you guys that you don't get from maybe a Kevin or a, or a Marshawn? And Z White been balling, man. You know, and, and you know, Z White has he has really good size, he has really good speed. You know, um, I mean his. His his cutting ability is is really good. I always say he, he got that Florida stick. You know, he, he from Florida, he got that stick, he got that dead leg stick right on him. But he has really good hands at the backfield. Um, last year he was one of the better special team players. I turned his tape at Gunner, and he's out there dominating out there. So he's really good on special teams, and he's just bringing that edge, man. He brings that juice, and he's he wants to play. And you know, he's an experienced guy. He's been around. Started off at Florida State and went to JUCO and got here kind of late last year. But, you know, he has experience in football. He has really good football knowledge. And, you know, that's been surprising to me. He retains things really well. You know, when we put in, you know, we've been installing. We've been kind of NFL game plan installing. We get a new install every single every single practice. You know, I've been some places where spring ball you might do one install, two install, go back, do one, do two, and then move forward. We've been plugging along just like NFL, putting new things in, and he's been picking it up. So he's been having a really good spring. Hill. Hey, Coach, uh, just wanted to see what you, you've seen from Rashad Amos. You, you mentioned I think he's kind of a blend of speed power, but what can you share a little more details about him? Uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I was first of all, you know, Amos, not Amos, it's Amos. He's going to tell you that it's Amos. So, uh, so but, but uh, Rashad Amos has been, has, has been really good. Um, he, he's been coming along. He, he missed a little time there, um, but getting him back, he missed about two or three days. But he, he, had, a, he had a really good winner. Um, and now coming along with practice, he's been flashing, making plays. Um, the, the thing about Amos, he can hit it inside, outside. He has really good feet. And I don't know if y'all seen how he's built, though. He's built like a tank, man. He has those big legs like Saquon. But he also has really good hands at the backfield. He has good feet for a one, two. So really just him, man, it's just about maturity. You know, getting his, getting his stuff good off the field. Just kind of maturing him on the field as well because he's only a freshman. He played in a handful of games last year at the end, and he played well in those games. But just kind of getting him some more game reps, seeing what the defense is going to do. And with what we're doing out there right now with Coach White, you know, they're multiple defenses as well. So he's getting a chance to see a lot of different looks, but he's he's coming along and he's going to be another guy that, you know, I, I think as he continues to play, he's going to be at, at more competition in that room. So the more the merrier, man, and they're going to push each other to get better. Eric Boynton. Yeah, Coach, obviously um, <clears throat> last year Kevin proved he could be a featured back and be the main ball carrier. What's kind of your philosophy on what – do you kind of maybe want to have a guy get 20 carries a game and then – spell him with another guy or two or are you more than happy to have maybe two guys that get 17 to 20 carries a game especially if Marshawn proves to be as advertised I was about to say two at 20 sounds pretty good to me I mean uh, but I'll just uh it, it just kind of depends how, how how it works out um you know I've I, I've been in that situation where I've I've been in the timeshare I've been a guy but also we had a feature guy but the backup also has seven eight hundred yards so it kind of just depends how it go once we get everybody in we see how this kind of offense kind of roll are we going to be 60 40 runs 60 40 pass how are we going to play it out like we're still learning each other um you know coach Satterfield still learning the offense I mean still learning the offensive personnel so we're, we're kind of kind of still working it but I don't have a main philosophy on that you know if if I got a guy I'm let I'm gonna let him go ahead and be the guy you know but but as well if I got some other guys that can play, we're gonna get those guys in the field and get and let the skill set be shown. So um that is that that is that is yet to be determined on my end how I'm gonna play those guys yet in the regular season because right now we're still in the process of kind of just getting our team together and building and learning our offense. We may maybe too far out to ask this, but do you kind of know what your kind of plan would be as far as would you go into each game with kind of a plan in mind or would you go into each game and just say, hey, let's see who has the hot hand or and just kind of play it game by game? Or would you rather have kind of a set plan that you'd like to stick to going into every week? Well, let's just go. Let's just go hypothetically. I'm, I'm sure, you know, as you as you get the game plan going, you have your starters, you have your certain players, you know, you're going to run for the game. 
You know, if there are certain plays in where, all right, in this look, all right, Marshawn's good at the outside at the outside zone, or Z White good at this halfback pass at the backfield, then they, then they may be personnel then. Or it could be soon as, you know, Kev is starting it off, the, the first two racks, or he has the first series, he gets the blow, Marshawn comes in and knocks out the part, now you come on the stand for the second series. So it's kind of feel of the game, but also I plan on having guys with certain plays in so we can make sure we get certain guys touches. So it'll kind of be a mixture of both. Colin Taylor. Monterey, not asking you to reveal state secrets, but what are what are your impressions right now of this offense and how the running backs are kind of getting used? Uh, you know, our offense is very, very multiple. Um, you know, the quarterbacks are learning and coming along. Um, we have some experienced guys up front on the O-line. So, you know, those guys come along. We have some guys out that are kind of getting back. So the O-line depth and personnel is kind of showing. Um, the wide receivers sort of step up and make plays for them. Man, they have a lot of different things, man. We're different formations, different things, like a lot of different nuances in our offense. And honestly, it's a, it's a grown man offense. It's NFL style. If you look at our installs, man, where, you know, it's things that they're running in the NFL. It's timing. It's, you know, dual reads from the quarterback. It's the, the running back. You got to know outside, inside. You got to get pickup protection, you know. We're, we're picking up bits and safeties, bits and corners, all those different things. It's multiple, man. As a tailback, we've been spread out. We've been moving all over the field. We're shifting. We're motioning. So I'm liking it. I, I think we'll have to – I mean, we'll have to we, – we will be able to do everything in the playbook and just kind of scale it down to game plan specifically for each team. But I think we're going to be very, very multiple, very dynamic. You know, I think, I think we're going to stretch the, the field vertically, but also we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna make you check the sideline. We're going we're gonna to get some quick screen passes off to you. We're going to see what you do. And also, we're, I, I think the bigger thing I like about it is that we're always ready to adjust. You know, if you got something where you're trying to stop our stuff, we have, always have something off that. So um, I, I, I I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm enjoying seeing how the guys are picking it up, and I'm enjoying to see how multiple it is and how we always got to an answer for what you have. Hill. Coach, I know Juju McDowell in there with you guys right now, but from, from what you've seen of, of him on film, what, what do you think he'll add to the group when he, when he gets in later this year? I spoke, I spoke to Juju earlier earlier this week. Uh, I, I like Juju's skill set because, to me, he's different than anything I got in the room right now. So I said earlier how I like to diversify that portfolio. So he'll be another – he'll be a different type of back. You know, he's, he's a little bit shorter, but he has good size with his stockiness. You know, on tape, he's a really good special team player. So I think he can help us in that aspect off rip in the, you know, in the, in the return game. But also he's multiple in the backfield. Um, so I'm excited to see him get here. Uh, I've heard nothing but good things about him on the recruiting trail. And, you know, he's, he's a South Georgia kid, so they always have ballers, man. I've, I've always liked going there and recruiting some guys from there. So um, I, I'm excited for him to get here uh, this summer and kind of get going and me kind of being able to put my hands on him and see exactly what he needs to work on, things that he can fix. But just from talking to him, I, I, I love his energy. He's always working. So I, I think he's going to add that to the group as well. He's going to come in ready to work. I mean, he's always, every day he's at the field getting working, doing those things. So he's going to come in with that mindset that he's trying to get on the field as well. And, and I have one more question. It, it's kind of a tough question to ask because I don't know if you real, really feel comfortable comparing your guys to other guys you've seen over the years. Uh, but but do, do any of your backs, you know, really remind you of anybody you've watched, played against, been on the same field with, anything like that? Uh, well, I, honestly, they kind of remind me of a, of a lot of different players. So I don't really want to just because – Kev might get mad at me if, if, if I say if I say he run like Michael Turner or something like that, even though he was nice. So, uh, so I really, really, I, I really can't put a hand on it because some of these guys remind me of some guys that I played in college with, some guys I played in high school with, maybe, maybe some guys that I've coached that we won't know as much. But they definitely got different skill sets. But I, I think I think Kev though the biggest thing with Kev, he's one of those backs that you know you're like when you, when you look at him, you don't think that he's 230 pounds, and you know he he can. He can he can move, he can run inside and outside, but he can also catch really well. So I, I kind of said that to him that Michael Turner was a guy I used to look at and didn't think he was fast, didn't think he would break out like that how he, how he, how he did, and he always had really good hands at the backfield. So, um, and you know, Marshawn hasn't hasn't been out there yet. Uh, Z White, he got that Florida stick, so he got, he got that really good dead leg, man. So it, it's kind of like he like a sped up Le'Veon, you know what I mean? Because he also has really good hands, but he, he has those moves kind of like him. He slithers in the slide from side to side, and then Amos, Saquon Barkley, he going to like that because he thinks he's Saquon Barkley, but he really does move like him. He has a lower body similar to him. And uh, Marshawn Lloyd always tell me I can't compare him to anybody yet because I haven't seen college Marshawn, his exact words. So I'll wait on the Marshawn comparison until I see him up close and personal. Colin. Montero, two questions. I think, how does it make you feel that Kevin Harris was four years old your freshman year at 
Tennessee? And have you put turned on any uh turn on hating me show? right now, man? You hate me. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Have you turned on your film yet for these guys? Cut it on one time, man. Just, just, just kind of being funny. Like I was, I was looking through the stuff and seeing they had the old, they had old game tape up here. So I just, I just cut on the game on Halloween when I had the little spin move on it one time. That's it. I, I, I ain't show them. I don't like to talk about myself too much. So and, and plus they wouldn't know anyways. Like you said, they was four years old when I was playing. And just kind of sticking with the recruiting trail, what's it been like to be able to recruit now that you've been here? And what's been the response from the guys you are able to get on the phone with and get on Zooms with? And recruit and recruit, and I love it. I mean, that's gonna be the lifeblood of our program, and you know, I, I think here that's one of the reasons I took this job is because, you know, first of all, Coach, Coach Beam, I believe in the vision, and I think that he's building something special here. But then also the location where we're at, and you know, I, I feel like I can get the best backs in the country here at South Carolina. That, that's been proven; it's been done. So, um, so, and just the location for us to get recruit overall, we're in a prime location. Um, so for me, I think recruiting has been good. It's been a lot of Zoom, you know, haven't been able to get these guys here in person yet. Hopefully with this, you know, uh, you know coronavirus stuff kind of starting to dwindle down a little bit, we were able to get guys back for in-person visits, kind of feel that energy. But online has been good. We've been having a lot of the, you know, top recruits in the country getting on Zoom calls. You know, we've been starting those really good relationships with guys. You know, I got some really good relationships with, with some of the top backs and some of the guys in my area. So it's, it's been coming along. And I think once we, once we get guys back here in person, they'll be able to see and feel our new staff and new energy. I think it'd be great. But, you know, re recruiting is something that's big for me. And um, like I always say, I got the pitch right here. Hey, recruits, come home to Carolina.